Hello my friends, welcome to my new video. Finally, finally, after spending more than a month here in Belize, I'm making video about my first impressions here. So today I will share with you what I have been doing. I will show you the city center and maybe take you for a cup of coffee. Let's go! I've stumbled upon some really fancy district and found this place, Fabrica. It is like a set of fancy coffee shops and there are many young, cool people there. And I uh, went up to some bar, wanted to buy coffee, but I was so embarrassed because everyone was so stylish there, so that I, I was so shy and I ordered just Americano. America, in such a place you order Americano, in such a place full of so many fancy coffee shops, I ordered this. But I mean, I felt that I'm not that stylish, that's why I felt embarrassed. By the way, you have the opportunity to see my new t-shirt. Yes, I bought a white t-shirt here and a blue one. And I just don't know, I don't have a habit of going for buying clothes, you know? That's why I'm wearing my like two t-shirts and that's it. And feel embarrassed when I go to the social settings. But yeah, uh, it's a nice place. I decided if I already wasted my today's opportunity to buy good coffee, I would then just film my video instead. So as I said, this is the, some of the fancy central streets, many fancy places. I think I overused the word fancy. I feel embarrassed, even though I know that I'm totally fine, but just I want to be as stylish and fashionable as those people. Oh my god, you see this? McDonald's, it works here. It is a normal country that doesn't have sanctions. Is it real? And if you start to calm me down, like Natasha, you're fine. Don't hate yourself. You're beautiful. Look at yourself. I mean, I know, but still, the ability to dress nicely is like a skill. I guess you just have to practice. Remember how in my vlog from May, I was sharing about finally buying new. Oh my god. About finally buying new pants. I was so happy about this. So what you just witnessed is my usual struggles about my outfit. It is not something too severe. I think it's just a part of my personality. And of course, I realized that it's not really good when your self-esteem depends on clothes. I hope that it's not like this. I don't know, do you have the same? That's why I decided to go to a mall. Let's explore Georgian malls. I mean, they're all probably the same like in other countries, but still, I need to add some suspense here. Oh my god, Zara is open here. Is it even real? I just can't. What is this? Ancient dam? No, no, I cannot look at this. Do you feel this Western evil influence? This Uncle Sam? I don't care that it's Swedish. Do you know how it is uh, translated? H stands for homo. And what M stands for mental health? You snowflakes. I'm so glad that the Russian government did everything to get rid of such stores in Russia. After visiting that pro-Western evil shops that totally made me gay, or maybe just gayer, I bought this shirt and, oh my god, I'm so excited about this, so uh, as you can see, it suits me really well. Let me show you how, oh my god, 
the whole setting is gonna fall down. My pants still are not like suitable for this, but I know what you saw because I'm just feeling it with my phone. But I love it. I love this. I feel so much better. Here in Georgia, I actually can protest in the streets. Wow, shock content. So I'm going from the meeting. I also met Zach and he was live streaming and he interviewed me. Like he said, one of the most important goals of our um, protests and event is to gather humanitarian, uh, humanitarian help for the Ukrainian refugees. We are helping the organization of the Belisi which is presented over there. How does it feel to like speak out, to be in the protest outside of Russia, not being afraid that you're going to be arrested or beaten up by the police? It feels such a healthy and natural thing. And the policemen are standing there and they're just uh, guarding us. They are not, you know, beating us, raping in the police station and so on. But for me, the Russian, is it is some privilege people in Russia cannot have. Thank you, Zach, for yeah, streaming. Yeah. yeah, I mean, thank you for coming. You got the Ukrainian flag yeah, here today. You. you were you were showing it as a support to Ukraine. That's great. That's, well, basically that's about it for the live stream. I still think that there could have been more people because I had some beef in uh, the TikTok comments with Georgian people. This guy told me why if there are so many Russians here, why only a few of you are going to the protest? And honestly, I didn't know what to answer that guy. I said th that probably because some people are still scared. Some people who ran from Russia because of uh, repressions, they probably are still scared to show their face in the protest here in Tbilisi. If you don't know, in Russia, FSB agents, also called Ashniki, they were going to protest and taking pictures of uh, people who p participate there. When we protested in Khabarovsk in 2020, one man, he looked really sketchy. He just came up to me without any hesitation, just took a picture of my face. I was a little bit confused. Now I know that I should have just showed this to him. Yeah, but uh, ugh, I, I feel so angry when I talk about the horrible, disgusting people that dogs that serve to the regime but anyway, the protest that was uh, taking place in Belisi, there were many people, there were leaders of some prominent Russian organizations, but still I wanted to see more people there. Probably they are scared. And another reason is that they just don't see the point of protesting in another country. You might say, go back to Russia and protest there, but we cannot go back to Russia. And I think that it is still really important to show your position even in another country as a Russian diaspora. I also saw Iranian people protesting here in Tbilisi and it is really inspiring how they are protesting. And also by this protest we show to the local Georgian people that we are, I don't want to use the phrase, good Russians, but we are the people who disagree with the Putin regime and that we are not a threat to the local Georgia people. Because, you know, Georgia and Russia are still in a very difficult relationships. There is a long history of Russia's imperialism in Georgia. It's funny that being in Georgia, being in another country, I'm not afraid of uh, this another country, I'm afraid of my own country that still has some influence. I really hope for the democratic future of Georgia. I see that people are thriving to the democratization, to the evil West. I'm so rooting for the Georgian people and for Ukraine uh, to get rid of the, uh, Russia's influence. And this will happen when Putin's regime falls. And I hope this will happen. And there are many Ukrainian flags here in Georgia. Georgians support Ukraine. Mostly, probably they feel the pain of Ukrainians because both Georgia and Ukraine, they've had enough from Russia. That made me to feel that I am a little bit not in the place here, you know, but this is topic for another video. Yeah, I will make a video about 
Russophobia in the West. Spoiler, there is no Russophobia. Yeah, there are some people who probably were uh, hurt too much and they, of course, feel negative towards Russians. And I understand it. There are always extremes in society. This is fine. I also went to a lot of events like stand-up show, concerts, and these all were Russian-owned bars. And when I went to the concert, I saw a lot of young people there, mostly they were Russian, and I felt so sorry for these young generations who want to do something good for this world. But then one stupid and crazy dictator takes all the power and sends such young people to the war. We don't care about your future, your plans, your families, the environment. I just want to throw more bombs. I think that Putin is like Hitler now. This war that is still going on, in the history textbooks, it will be the most shameful stain on the Russian history. This is a trauma and a wound that will be recovered for many years, if ever will be. I don't know if I will ever see this. And also, I saw many comments from you, like, I'm so sorry that you had to leave your motherland, you have to start new life in a new country. But here's the thing, I always wanted to leave Russia. I mean, I'm really praised by these comments, uh, by the fact that you are worrying about me, and you're totally right. Because being an immigrant in another country is really difficult, and I feel so much respect for people who leave everything behind, and go to seek for the better life, who overcome struggles, learn a new language. But it's not my case, because I always wanted to leave Russia, I have a full-time YouTube job. Maybe it sounds a little bit uh, harsh, bitter, but I really don't miss much things about Russia. And if you look back at my videos from January of this year, when I was discussing my YouTube channel, I will probably insert this video there. But at some point, when, not even when my channel became growing, but with months, because uh, all the repressions increased, at some point I became paranoid. I deleted all my videos where I was like mentioning the protest. But in Russia, you, you can go to jail for making a video about a protest, for just standing with a poster, for posting body positive pictures online. Maybe you think that I gone crazy, but no, I spoke to some other Russian YouTubers who make such kind of content and they feel the same. I mean, all my peers feel the same. I lived in constant anxiety. Yeah, even though my standard of living improved a lot, I earned a lot of money from YouTube, I could afford really good life in Russia, I still felt anxiety. I feared that the government is gonna take all my money. I know it was too paranoid, but guess what? One month later, the government literally took all my money. I mean, I'm talking about the situation when I had to transfer all my rubles to dollars, then again to rubles, and I lost a lot. I was paranoid, but it was proved by what the Russian government did later. I could see it coming. I could not stay in Russia. And yeah, I'm starting a new life. I will try to go to some Western country. Um, anybody? A citizenship? I also went to explore a cathedral and a beautiful old town Tieta, close to Tbilisi. There is a lot to see in Georgia, but uh, I so far saw only this and a little bit of Tbilisi. Travels I decided to leave for the future. I also went to some really cool event, Tbilisi Cleans Up, this is the organization that makes such events. We go to places and literally clean the trash from there and then recycle it. So when I went there, we went to the Tbilisi Sea, the local lake. My trophy was that I collected seven syringes. Also that event was partially sponsored by the local Rock Credit Bank. So there were workers, Georgians and us Russian volunteers. And we had a picnic, really cool vegan burger cupcake. It was really cool. There are pictures, sunny day, I enjoyed it. And I want to visit such events more. For some reason, I really like such cleanup events. I don't know, for me, it's like a game. 
I have to make a video about this event and if you're interested in this, please write in the comments and I will make it. This will be cool. Sometimes it seems to me that I'm still in Russia because I exist in my informational bubble of Russian expats, I go to the Russian events and I realize that it is really dangerous and I have to remind myself that no, I'm not in Russia, I'm in another country and uh, I think that with time I will be more and more immersed into the local culture. And so far, of course, I don't know Georgian, but I was learning Georgian alphabets and it was so unusual because the Georgian alphabet is a whole another system of letters. Okay, I learned Russian letters when I was five. I learned English letters, Latin, when I was eight. And here, at the age of 23, I have to learn a whole another system and Georgian letters, they look really intricate and beautiful. I probably like them most. I can read sometimes. I know some phrases, of course, I say gamarjoba, madloba, hello, thank you. I always start conversation with English, but really often local people, especially the older generation, they start talking Russian to me. Taxi drivers, almost all of them speak Russian. That's what uh, really helps. Probably I have to finish this video, my phone is dying, so am I inside? No, no, I actually feel really good, I am so excited, I will make, yeah, I say it all the time, but really, really, I will make a video about mobilization, some more videos about Georgia. Thank you so much for watching, like this video, subscribe to my channel, I'll see you very soon, and goodbye, пока-пока!